Hello. This presentation discusses several ways in which interpolation and dispersive functions can be utilized in optical thin film calculations. We first consider familiar and not so familiar lookup tables. The image at the left shows a typical NNK dispersion table whose values are linearly interpolated at calculation wavelengths. The not so familiar image at the right indicates how two index tables might be combined. N1K1 refers to an SIO2 table, while N2K2 refers to hafnium dioxide HFO2. We define user index function SIHF as a function of HFO2 fraction A. Once a function is defined, we verify by evaluating and plotting as shown in the next slide. More about the formula editor later. Our SIHF mixed film is plotted in the dispersive index functions dialog, which enables us to select both built-in and user-defined functions. A equals 0 corresponds to 100% SiO2 and A equals 1 to 100% HFO2. Note, this function is given only for illustrative purposes. We are not implying any accuracy. We briefly introduced dispersion functions as discussed in an important paper by Dobrovolsky and colleagues on reverse synthesis. If dispersion is known to be smooth and well represented by a mathematical expression, typically a polynomial, reverse synthesis is greatly simplified in comparison to point-by-point -point solutions. Many popular materials, such as SiO2 and TaO2, can be thus represented over fairly wide wavelength ranges. There are several such functions, some of which are favored by equipment manufacturers. As can be seen in percent %t versus wavelength plots of Frank's TA205 and TiO2, values calculated by reverse synthesis can fit measured spectra despite noisy data. Imagine the mess in fitting N and K point by point. Note that reverse synthesis is the same as optimization or refinement, but with measured spectra as targets. We move on to a useful but possibly less familiar variation, n as lookup table and k as dispersion function. A laboratory asked us to analyze silicon nitride, SI3N4, deposited on polycrystalline silicon. Only reflectance measurements were provided. In general, one needs reflection and transmission values to deduce n and k. In any case, the first step is to plot data and think about it. Think before computing. Measured silicon reflectance was first compared with calculated reflectance using SOPRA's SI Poly file. While not perfect, agreement seems close enough. And the SI3N4 plot, green trace, looks reasonable. We next downloaded SI3N4 dispersion tables from refractiveindex.info and from the Filmetric website. Referring to the right-hand image, the laboratory spectrum, now the red trace, is compared to the calculated spectrum utilizing Filmetric N and K. Noting the coincidence of peaks and valley positions, we deduce that Filmetric N values are reasonable and K is much less than N. Larger K would smear the wiggles. While the laboratory film has nearly the same N as film metrics, it is considerably more absorbing. Okay. We define user index function SI3N4K, where N is interpolated from the film metrics table, and K is given by a Cauchy formula with WM wavelength in microns. The interactive windows at the right enable us to quickly find coefficients superimposing measured green and calculated red spectra. 
Starting with coefficients a, b, c and thickness determined interactively, Damply squares refinement leads to quite good agreement as shown here. While in general both reflection and transmission measurements are required to deduce n and k, in general does not mean always. Finally, the purple trace at the top indicates that the laboratory's SI3N4 is far more absorbing than reported by others. We next consider the alloy aluminum gallium arsenide, where n and k are functions of aluminum fraction x. n and k is then a function of fraction x and wavelength. Starting with n and k data for discrete x, bilinear interpolation allows us to predict n and k for any wavelength and aluminum fraction within defined ranges. x then serves as an optimization variable enabling us to determine an aluminum fraction best meeting design requirements. Bilinear interpolation is performed using linear interpolation first in one direction and then again in the other direction. The graph it makes it look more complicated than it really is. Starting with nine aluminum gallium arsenide tables, for aluminum fraction x between 0 and 80.4%, bilinear interpolation in Excel gives n equals 4.09755 for x equals 20% and wavelength equals 500 nanometers. While it is possible to directly utilize the Excel workbook in our optical thin film calculations, the index formulator is simpler and much faster. Since optical calculations already interpolate over wavelength, we only need to add a second interpolation over aluminum fraction x. The calculation, complex as it first appears, is really a single line of high school algebra. 18 index tables are utilized, n1 to n9 and k1 to k9. The result is still n equals 4.09755. At this point, some of you might be wondering about the equation evaluator. Full disclosure, not invented here. The index formulator equation parser is based on a module implementing the AUK programming language developed at Bell Labs. Note how the missing left parenthesis triggers an error message. The same module is utilized for user-defined functions and optimization targets. Plotting n as a function of aluminum fraction x indicates that the equation works correctly. We next ensure that optical calculations also work correctly. Our final method is double dispersion, our term for bilinear interpolation based on thickness and wavelength variations. This is not only new, but breaks with previous practice. As stated in the quotation at the upper right, as N and K for metals depends on thickness, we are instructed to design with fixed metal thickness and vary only other layers. As double dispersion removes that restriction, the possibility of varying metal layer thickness is now available. We emphasize possibility because we assume that if n and k are known at thicknesses of 20 nanometers and 40 nanometers, interpolated values at 30 nanometers will be halfway in between. Here, the same index formulator is utilized. Note THK listed as a variable. Since wavelength dispersion is included in each table, 15 nanometers, 30 nanometers, etc., we only need to add thickness dispersion. Starting with well-known N and K lookup tables and dispersion functions, we have implemented bilinear interpolation in evaluating and optimizing coatings containing alloys and metal films. As double dispersion offers design possibilities contradicting previous practice, we look forward to its testing and implementation at coating facilities.